Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap here at IFA 2019 with Acer. And as you can tell by the red light on my face, <laughs> I'm actually at their gaming booth. This is the new Acer Predator Triton 300, as it says on the tin. And it's a bit of a refresh of their Triton 300 gaming laptop. This is one of the more affordable laptops in their lineup. It's still unmistakably a gaming laptop. They have made it a little thinner. It's 20 mils thick and it's about two kilograms heavy. So it's reasonably portable, but it's still definitely a gaming laptop. And you can tell from that Predator branding at the back. But most importantly, let's talk specs. And inside we've got an Intel 9th gen i7 processor along with more importantly the GTX 1650 graphics card from Nvidia. Now that's a pretty decent mid-range graphics card obviously it's not one of the RTX GPUs so there's no ray tracing to be had but I'm not gonna lose any sleep over that but with the laptop's 1080p resolution you shouldn't have any problem having high settings in most recent AAA games. Now one thing that this does have is a high refresh rate display 144 Hertz although I'm a bit worried how often you'll actually get up to 144 FPS in the latest games with that 1650. You may have to drop the settings a little bit to fully take advantage of the high refresh, but it does mean everything looks nice and smooth, battery smooth. If you've not used a high refresh rate display before, I definitely recommend it. It really is essential for gamers. So it's a 15 inch 144 Hertz display with a three millisecond response time. It's not a touchscreen, although who cares, it's a gaming laptop. And we've also got Wi-Fi 6 in here because of course connectivity so sort of reliable Wi-Fi and internet is really important if you are playing online competitively. You can't play CSGO and then blame the lag because this has Wi-Fi 6, which should be faster. Although I think you'll also need a compatible Wi-Fi 6 router to take advantage of that, but it makes it more future-proof. And if Wi-Fi 6 doesn't do it for you, then there's a killer Ethernet port as well if you prefer a wired connection. And we've also got a solid range of ports, including an Ethernet, mini display port, HDMI, USB Type-C, although I don't believe it's Thunderbolt 3, three USB type A's, two of which are the faster 3.1 variety and one slower one, as well as a three and a half mil headphone jack and the power. So that's a good range. And there's also a turbo button. So just with one press, it kind of overclocks it, puts it to maximum performance mode and you should get a little bit more power out of it. It's a pretty good looking laptop. It's got quite sharp corners here, which uh, aren't the most comfortable. We've got a good sized trackpad, this backlit blue keyboard, this sort of, is it blue, teal, light blue? But it looks nice. The bezels are still fairly chunky. It would have been nice to see that trimmed down a little bit. There's 16 gigs of RAM, but you can upgrade this to 32 gigs if you want in the future. You can have it with up to a one terabyte SSD, but an extra slot means that you can also add an additional NVMe SSD in RAID 0, and it even has room for a separate two terabyte hard drive. That's potentially a lot of storage. The keyboard is RGB, but it's limited to four zones rather than being per key backlighting, but it's great to see all the same. We can talk about specs all day long, but for me, it's just great to see more affordable gaming laptops with 144Hz IPS screens. So I'll definitely be interested to see how this performs. And yeah, if you're looking for a relatively affordable gaming laptop with solid specs, it's not gonna blow you away, and also a nice high refresh rate display, then I think this is something that you should definitely consider. The Triton 500 has also had an update, which you can now get with a frankly ridiculous 300 hertz refresh rate. I mean, it's cool from a technical point of view, I guess, but I don't know how often you'll get 300 FPS in your games, and if you'll really see a difference over 240 hertz. So the Triton 300 will be available in October for around £1,300 or $1,400. I'm going to try and review this fully and get it back to the studio, but for now that's just a quick hands-on with the new Triton 300. I would love to hear what you make of it in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more of me, then why not press that like and subscribe button below, and you can do just that.